What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the new Samsung Galaxy A25 5G. Now, this is a phone I'm actually really excited about, and to be totally honest, that's not something I said about the last couple of A20-something devices. Last year's A24 4G was an odd 4G-only device that was released in a couple of parts of the world and really just made no sense in Samsung's A-series lineup. The year before that, Samsung released both a 4G-only A23 and 5G A23, which weren't bad devices on their own. They just contributed to an overcrowded and confusing A-series that year with better options to choose from. The last really good A20-something devices were definitely the A21 and A21s. I mean, those phones were just wildly popular and such a good value for the time. And I think with this new A25, a lot more people are going to be reconsidering this tier of A-series as a great budget smartphone option. The A25 has quite a few upgrades this year that I think make it a better value than ever before and if you're considering a smartphone in that sub $300 range, this might just be the best option out there at the moment. There's obviously a lot to talk about with this phone, and I'm going to fill you in on everything you need to know. But first things first, let's just quickly unbox it so I can show you what all comes inside the package if you decide to buy one yourself. So slicing into the sticker there and sliding off the cover, the first thing you'll see is the Samsung stamped cardboard packet that's filled with really the only accessories that are included. A whole bunch of paperwork no one ever reads and a USB-C to USB-C cable for charging the phone. At the bottom of the box there is the phone itself wrapped up all nicely and the only other thing you'll find there is a SIM ejector tool if you need it but that's still all you get with Samsung's flimsy minimal packaging. With all that stuff out of the way here is the new A25 itself. I opted for the blue black color, which here in the US is the only option available on Samsung's website right now, but the phone does also come in yellow, which looks more like a cosmic lime green, along with a lighter shade of blue. I definitely got stuck with the most boring color option of the bunch. And as far as pricing and availability, here in the US at least, it's pretty straightforward. The A25 is available unlocked directly from Samsung for $299, but Amazon right now is running a limited time time deal showing this phone at 265 bucks and the A25 is also the sort of device that mainstream carriers and prepaid networks will be pushing at big discounts if you sign up for a new line or switch plans. Boost Mobile, for example, has a $99 deal for this phone right now. Total by Verizon is selling it for $199 as a prepaid device. So there are a lot of options to save some money on this phone. And if you wanna do some comparison shopping of your own, I'll leave some links down below in the video description to where you can get the A25 at its cheapest current price. Physically, the A25 didn't change much from last year. It's still a big 6.5 inch smartphone. That's the display size corner to corner with a slightly better screen to body ratio thanks to slimmer, but still pretty thick black borders all around, a bulky bottom chin, and a selfie camera notch that all still reaffirm its budget build. In the hand, the phone is the tall, elongated 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio that's sort of tough to stretch your fingers all the way across, but the big screen is still a big plus at this price, and I feel like if you've used any other A-series phone at this point, you're pretty familiar with this big size. Around back, the plastic housing of the A25, the blue-black colorway, is certainly quite obvious, maybe even more so in this finish when compared to the glossy glastic finishes of some other A-series phones. There's this odd dotted design and slight shape that attracts a bit of fingerprints, more than I was expecting actually, and the very flat sides of the phone are a matching matte finish. Just be sure to peel off that protective plastic 
or don't if you want to keep it scratch free. There's no IP certification or waterproof rating here and nothing else particularly remarkable about the all plastic form factor. It still remains quite the budget build from top to bottom. Taking a look around on the left side, you've got a dual SIM and micro SD card tray. There's no eSIM support with the A25 and the SIM tray is the shared SD card and secondary SIM setup. So you'll have to choose between a second physical SIM card or a micro SD card, but it's nice at least to have that option. This year, the base storage configuration for the A25 is still 128 gigs, but you can get a 256 gigabyte model or obviously just pop in a $20 micro SD card if you want to double or triple that storage capacity. On the right side, there's very familiar volume and power buttons. The power button is also your fingerprint sensor for unlocking. It feels and functions like many of the other fingerprint sensors on these budget A-series phones. It's not the fastest or most accurate in the world, but convenient enough and a nice addition to pair with face unlock. At the bottom of the phone, the headphone jack is still there alongside the USB-C port and one of two speakers. There's a secondary speaker in the earpiece, which is new for this phone this year, and around back, a slightly altered triple lens camera setup that I'll go more in depth with in just a bit. So one of the first upgrades to the A25 is with its display. It's not necessarily major, but it does bring it up one more notch to nearly the level of a flagship phone. Seriously, the 6.5 inch screen on this thing is a super AMOLED panel, a full HD 2340 by 1080 resolution, packing in some 396 pixels per inch. All that is the same as last year so far, but it is now a 120 Hertz refresh rate display, and it retains its brighter than average capability, peaking at some 1000 nits. Altogether, these screen specs are pretty darn close to Samsung's S series flagship phones, at least the core specs minus the brightness. And I think this is the first big value proposition for the A25. The display is big, bold, colorful, and bright with punchy colors, deep dark blacks, and a viewing experience that I think hits well above its weight. It's sharp, even though it's big, it has a high enough pixel density to where you won't be seeing any pixels on screen, no matter how closely you might look. And the 120 Hertz, while not a huge change over last year's 90 Hertz, is still something to where this phone feels faster and more responsive. It looks smooth and fluid as you scroll and tap and swipe. And I think it's more so just the principle of the thing that you get all these great specs at a sub $300 price point. I will admit that this phone still does have a bit of a glare problem. The front display glass, to my knowledge, is a few years old. And of course the flagships still get way, way brighter. But for the last few years, Samsung kept cheaping out with the displays on their A20 somethings in one way or another. One year it would be LCD with 120 Hertz. The next year it's 90 Hertz AMOLED. This year though, all the boxes are checked. And this is far and away the best viewing experience ever on a Samsung phone in this price range. On top of that, Samsung improved the out loud listening experience too. For the first time ever, this phone has a dual speaker setup with that secondary sound coming from the earpiece up top. Is it amazing? No, not at all. It still sounds pretty budget. It's rough, tinny, muffled with a lot of distortion, but hey, it's better. It's an upgrade. And I appreciate Samsung adding it anyway. The other big area of improvement for the A25 is specs. Inside, this new phone is powered by Samsung's own Exynos 1280 processor, which originally launched in 2022 with the A53 5G. And before you grab your pitchforks, 
I think this is a decent processor, all things considered, and probably the right choice for this phone. You also get the option of either six or eight gigabytes of RAM, and like I mentioned earlier, 128 or 256 gigabytes of onboard storage. Here are the updated Geekbench scores for that Exynos processor, and there's a few things I wanna touch on based on my immediate experience with this phone out of the box. The A25 is currently updated to Android 14 and One UI 6. It isn't running One UI Core or some half-baked version of Android like older budget phones did, so that's all fine and dandy. And new this year, along with the A15, Samsung is promising not only five years of quarterly software security updates, but also four major Android updates over the lifespan of this phone. And that's great. That means this A25 will at least feel up to date and safe security wise for quite a while. And while I think most people are quick to upgrade or switch out budget devices far more often than the flagship phones, perhaps this guarantee of software updates inspires you to keep the A25 for a bit longer than usual, sort of making it a decent long-term smartphone investment. I personally also feel that this phone is plenty snappy and responsive out of the box for what it is. It's the sort of phone that teeters between the line of budget and mid-range, but given the specs inside this thing derive from Samsung's upper tier A series from a couple of years ago, the A25 now to me feels like a higher mid-tier device, basically something better than budget when it comes to those specs. Now I'm of course gonna put this phone to the test for my full review and also do some speed test comparisons between it, the A15, the A05, and maybe some other devices too, but to me, this A25 seems to be a step higher for the A20-somethings this year. When it comes to battery size and charging speeds, Samsung didn't upgrade or otherwise change anything here. You still get a big, beefy 5,000 milliamp capacity battery crammed inside this phone, which is great. I know of some folks who can go almost two full days on a single charge with light usage on these A-series phones, and the A25 also supports the slightly faster 25 watt charging speeds when it is finally time to juice up. Just just be sure to go out and actually get a 25 watt power adapter yourself though. Why Samsung doesn't just include that in the box, I still don't understand. Other than the old fashioned plug and cord though, there's no wireless charging on this phone or any other power or charging features to speak of. Finally, something I sort of expected here with the A25 was Samsung's decision to keep the camera set up basically the same as not just last year, but also when compared to even the A23. The main lens appears to be the same 50 megapixel f1.8 aperture shooter that's graced these A series phones for years and years now. Paired with it is a slightly better 8 megapixel 120 degree f2.2 aperture ultra wide, a lens I personally am always happy to see as it's not something typically added to budget devices even still today. And the third lens, well, well, it's a two megapixel macro for up close pictures, which I suppose is slightly more useful than a depth sensor now, but to me always just feels like this cop out afterthought to give the illusion of a more impressive triple camera setup. The selfie camera up front seems to be the same 13 megapixel lens as last year and inside the camera app, I will say that Samsung gives the A25 a handful of additional camera modes and capabilities that prop it up a bit higher than the A05 and A15. There isn't any better zoom capabilities, but there's pro photo and video controls, super slow-mo video, hyperlapse, and new this year, 4K video recording at 30 frames per second alongside 108060. The high megapixel photo mode is still here, along with enhanced video stabilization when filming in 1080p, and a handful of other helpful camera settings. Snapping a couple sample shots here, to me, these images look quite good, and they fall just outside the realm of what I see in Samsung's other budget phones. It's a little better for sure. I think the better processor also helps, alongside the newest software update, but I'll be interested to see maybe how good this camera setup is when compared to those other A-series phones, and also where it probably still falls short compared to the flagship devices. And I'll be sure to test out all of that in my full review.
To me, the new A25 brings enough new changes this year to certainly warrant an upgrade. The 120 hertz display caps off a flagship caliper viewing experience now. The upgraded internal specs are in line with previous top tier A series phones that commanded a higher price tag than this one. And did I mention this is a 5G phone? When you compare all of that to the A24 4G, if anyone even bought that phone last year, this is definitely a better buy. And if you're still on maybe the A23 or A22 or a top tier A21 from a couple of years ago, then this A25 is the long awaited upgrade you've been hoping to see. But what do you guys think? Is the A25 a device you're considering right now? Or is there something else that might be a better deal for that $300 price tag? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.